Greetings art lovers, I am Elvoria, and today I am critiquing Ventura, a 16x pack by Irish Pixels. We'll start the critique here in our genuine simulated biomes, starting of course with the snow since we're up on a mountaintop. Here we see the packed ice, which is basically just a color field with a lot of little squares in it. There's not really much form or anything to indicate that this is ice. The same goes with the normal ice, which I'm pretty sure is just the same texture, but uh, slightly transparent. And with the Frostwalker ice, which just gets darker as it starts to break. Now I'm not really a fan of this. It Maybe it's just getting more transparent? Is that how this is working? Yeah, it's actually just getting more transparent. Eh, that's kind of interesting, but I feel like there should actually be texture to it. Um, but then again, this pack is going for a very simple style, which you can see in the large color fields and little uh, blocky details that just kind of imply texture rather than really actually showing it. The same goes with the dirt, which is actually is randomized, by the way. You can see the, uh, the little stones in this texture, but not in the adjacent one. Which is cool. I always like when uh, artists do randomized textures in resource pack, as long as it's not distracting. Um, the dirt, or the side grass, pretty much the same thing. Has nice shading under the snow, and then just kind of continues down into the dirt texture. It's very, very cool. And here we see a little bit more of the snow texture, which does have a bit of a repeating pattern uh, that you can see with the line of dots lining up perfectly right there. But it's not too bad, and it's low contrast enough to where it's not excessively distracting. Coming over to the mountain biome, we have cobblestone, which feels kind of in a different style. There's a lot of form here rather than just the implied detail of the stone and the blocks that we saw in the snow biome. It actually does outline brick and gives you a little bit of uh, single pixel texture details, which of course kind of tile a little bit uh, because they stand out. The gravel is kind of the same way, but it's also very complex. It's not really just a single color field so much as it is a color field with a lot of detail. But it feels more like dirt with uh, with little st stones in it, with a lot more little stones in it, I should say. So it doesn't really feel like gravel, it feels more like, this is, this is more like what I th would think coarse dirt would be like. I don't know, that's just me. The grass I like, but it's very different again from the rest of the pack. There's a lot of subtle shading in this. Uh, there's probably like four or five shades, I think, that I can count. And that feels very, very different from the uh, the stone here, which is just three colors, fairly high contrast, whereas this is four or five colors, fairly low contrast. It feels like these are from two different packs. And that is kind of a problem with this pack, is the inconsistency. However, I have to give props for the little flowers that don't inherit the biome coloring, and so just end up making the grass look a lot better. It just feels very festive, kind of. Uh, well, festive isn't the right word, but more, um, more natural, more friendly, more happy. Here we see the pack getting a little bit too consistent. We have a fern here, and the uh, spruce sapling here. They're pretty much identical except for uh, one is a little bit lower into the ground and has the biome coloring. Now this actually is coarse dirt and it's basically the gravel texture but with a little bit more green. But even that little bit of green uh, ends up tiling and standing out. You can start to see the lines in it when you look uh, from high up where it kind of grids out the entire texture. I'm not a fan of that. But of course, getting back to the inconsistent part, the small fern looks nothing like the big fern. They are in almost two completely different styles. And I'm not a fan of that. 
it doesn't feel like these two are the same plant or even similarly related plants. Now I guess you could argue that that provides more diversity, but at the same time the two don't look good together either. Or at least not that good, being so very different. And even more high contrast, you'll notice that there's a uh, fourth shade of very dark there that's completely absent from the larger versions. So it ends up not feeling it ends up not feeling very good to have them side by side, in my opinion. But that's just me. The mossy cobblestone, pretty good, but it does have that uh, stripe of green that I'd imagine in a large enough field would probably stand out quite a bit. So I don't have one set up in this map, but uh, I mean, it really draws the eye, even when you look at it with this little bit, seeing that green stripe on every face. Not a fan of that sort of thing. In the forest biome, we get the oak sapling, which has like basically no texture at all. Now I wouldn't mind this too much if it weren't so inconsistent. We have the leaves which have uh, basically just like a cluster of squares, which was also in the spruce leaves. But here we have nothing. It's just a blank color field. And it feels very disappointing next to the other leaves. Now I don't expect for it to be exactly the same, but it feels, again, like a completely different style. The flowers, again, uh, are different from the saplings, and they don't feel quite right together. This has a lot more shading and depth, this very much does not. The grass, however, is pretty consistent with the flowers, so that's nice. The oak wood is a lot more detailed. Again, contrast this with a lot of lines to this, which doesn't even have shading between two pixels wide. Now I know that there's not a lot you can do in that space, I'm not criticizing that, but it does end up feeling very different when there is just no attempt at all to add any sort of detail here, but there's actually a lot of detail here over on the logs. There's also kind of a problem with, uh, with tiling again, where there's these light and dark uh, alternating stripes on the side that kind of stand out. It's not bad enough to be distracting, but it is noticeable, and I don't like when I can notice the tiling in things. That's just kind of a pet peeve. Over in the dark oak forest, we get more of these very flat, unshaded saplings. The logs are pretty much just a recolor of the other logs, and there are a lot of recolors in this pack. I'm not a fan of the rose bushes, I have to say. They don't feel good. They... It feels like a vine. Like, I'm expecting these uh, to become piranha plants, like little piranha plant buds, because piranha plants grow on vines, and I'm pretty sure that roses don't. This feels more like it should be the stem for, like, a pumpkin or melon or something, and just get rid of, like, the flower buds, or change them a little bit to be uh, to be more in line with that, with the uh, flowers that appear on a you know a pumpkin or melon or you know some kind of fruit vine, rather than trying to be a rose bush. There's a lot that just doesn't really fit or that seems inconsistent. The birch saplings are consistent with the previous saplings and have a very different level of detail from the flowers. And then we get another tiling problem with the white dots really obviously repeating. Now I know this pack is trying to go for a simple style, but it seems so inconsistent, again, when you have a texture like the grass, which has a lot of very subtle variation instead of being a lot of flat fields and obvious repeats. It just ends up kind of, I don't know, it just ends up not feeling very good when all of it's put together. Individually, these textures are fine for the most part. It's just once you start putting them all together in an environment that they don't really look all that good together. The jungle oak, or jungle oak, the jungle wood, again, has these little green buds that just tile up the sides. It's actually kind of cute, but I wish that there were some kind of variation with this. Uh, rather than just having it be straight up pattern. I do like the uh, the Cocoa Pods. I like them very much. They have a good level of detail. They're not excessively detailed, 
but they do feel like they have some depth and shading to them. Again, kind of unlike the jungle saplings, which, uh, I don't know, they just feel kind of... I don't want to say phoned in, but they just don't have that level of detail. But again, here's where we run into the problem, because this actually does look like it belongs with that. We're seeing what feels like two different packs. The melon has a good level of detail. The top could probably use some work as it's very plain, but the side actually does show some curvature in the shading, which is good. I appreciate that a whole lot. Coming down here, the path block is basically just another recolor of the grass. There's a lot of recolored and reused textures in here. And then with the flowers, the flowers are really nice. They all have a very consistent look that works well with the grass, both the tall and short, which, unlike the ferns, are very consistent with each other. So they end up looking very good together. Honestly, this whole flower biome looks really, really great. Uh, especially when compared to the others, barring the path block and the grass being different from the flowers in terms of how subtle their shading is, how their contrast is. The acacia saplings are a little bit more shaded. I like that, but they're still, they still feel more formulaic and less like light is hitting them or like they have proper leaves like the actual trees do. And again, the, uh, the actual logs, just a kind of a recolor. Nothing all that particularly special. I don't like this for the stained clay. I don't. It doesn't look natural. This is one of those things where if you want that to be the default look, if you want them to look like a manufactured block, the uh, stained clay to look like a manufactured block, it's one of those things where you really should try to use like uh, Optifine to do biome specific block textures because it ends up making the entire uh, Mesa biome look very manufactured, very built. And I don't know, that just always takes me out of the world when pack artists do something like this. It looks good in builds, but it doesn't look good in the actual biome and that is kind of a problem for me. And with the sand, it's just your average stripey pattern. And I'm not a fan of that either. But, again, going for a very simple style for some of this. I understand that, but... Uh, I don't know. It just feels like we have more depth in the large color field block than we do in the sand block, where things are supposed to be, you know, wavy and uneven and very granular. I... I don't know, it just seems like uh, like there's some consideration there. I like the uh, the dry bush. It's very tiny. It's very unobtrusive. It's pretty cool. Now here's where we get to where I think the pack is at its best, is with the red sandstone. We have a nice brick texture which, yes, does have a very strong repeat. Uh, we can see these certain bricks that just kind of stand out. We have this kind of nine, uh, pattern of nine framed where there's that dark spot above them and the brick is kind of indented. So there is a pattern, but it's not bad. It's not really eye gouging or eye catching. I also really like the uh, chiseled sandstone, which actually has a randomized texture to it. These are actually the same block. So that ends up kind of standing out as being a cool thing I'd imagine people who really love symmetry are gonna hate it, but you know, whatever. I'm I'm okay with it. And then the smooth one, again, it feels kind of different, but it keeps enough of the same texture as the regular sandstone, but with the I think with the top brick of the texture being the same, that it feels like it all belongs together. It's very good. I like it. Coming over to the regular desert, we see the same uh, brick texture. I think. No, actually, this is a different brick texture. Never mind, I stand corrected. Different brick texture, but we have a reuse of the uh, red sandstone here, or more than likely the other way around, since the regular sandstone was introduced to Minecraft first. And we have, again, the random uh, textures for the chiseled sandstone. So, this all looks very good, too. Here's something that really caught my eye. The cactuses. The cactus actually have these 3D, 3D thorns. 
that stick out. They have a really, really good level of detail that's kind of... How should I say it? It feels like this is the direction that the pack is going, and things like having these little pebbles in the gravel need to kind of catch up to it. So you have this one block that has all this beautiful 3D depth, and not honestly a whole lot else that does the same thing. I'm thinking that this is probably the direction that the pack is going to go, but that Irish Pixels just hasn't had the time to move the entire pack into this uh, 3D realm, as it were. So I'm looking forward to re-reviewing it when that happens. I think that this is going to be a good pack, just is kind of having a bit of a rough start. And here's where we kind of see more of that same sort of a thing. We have the 3D lily pads and the very decidedly 2D planar orchids. The orchids, by the way, are just kind of recolors of a lot of the other flowers. I'm not a fan of that again. The vines do stand out a bit, but they honestly don't feel too bad. They do have a strong repeating pattern, but it's not a bad one. Uh, the main thing that stands out with me for the vines is the inconsistency in the width of the vine. Where it gets like very, very thin right there, and very, very thick right along in there. That could use some work, I think. Coming over to the mushroom biome, we see that the mycelium is just bluegrass. Like, not from Tennessee, just like regular blue grass. Again, it kind of makes the block feel less special when it's just a recolor of something else. The mushrooms are very plain, very unshaded. Again, they don't look like they belong in the same pack with the grass. It really stands out. The mushrooms themselves do a lot more of the plain field with little white specks, or just kind of a shaded interior. Uh, honestly, I like the mushroom stock a lot more than I like the wood in this pack, although I think that each has its kind of own style, but I think that this is more consistent with the majority of the pack, whereas the wood almost needs to be less detailed to feel like it fits in with the rest of the pack. I love the sponges. They do the simple thing very, very well by having a lot of detail, but still using very few colors and um, having a good amount of depth without feeling like they're excessively bumpy or like there's a lot of granular detail. All of the details are very macro. And they just pretty much get darker when they get wet, so that's not a bad thing at all. It feels very natural for it to basically be the same texture, only a little bit darker. And the colors are really well chosen, so it actually does feel properly wet, rather than just, oh, it's a darker shade of yellow. It actually does shift into orange. I love that. That's very, very good. Coming over to the prismarine, we can see that there is some animation in the little gems, which is very cool. Now, there is kind of a repeat here with this uh, light area which, if I can fly over here real quick, you can kind of see does stand out a little bit. But the texture itself is actually busy enough to where it doesn't really stand out excessively, so honestly having these two little gems that always show up right next to each other stands out a whole lot more than the uh, white streak. This is kind of where I run into the critique with this one, because we then have to look at the dark prismarine. These two... Okay, here's what, I'm, here's what I wish would happen. Here's what I wish would happen. I wish that the dark prismarine, instead of being the color field with little square random details, was actually the same texture as this, but basically like reversed, with the color shifting dark parts being the main of the texture, and then having the little static aqua colored parts being the little gems. I think that, that would look very cool for this texture. Sadly, it did not happen. Uh, the prismarine bricks do not have an animated texture at all, which is fine, and it kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, this texture is very evocative of an old kind of an 8-bit sort of a game where they didn't do tiling particularly well, so you have rows of small bricks and then rows of wide bricks next to each other. I actually like that. I don't know if Irish Pixels was intending to be retro with this, but that's how it ended up feeling. And then, of course, we have with the uh, dark shading there, but not on the brick right next to it. 
So again, a bit inconsistent, but I think that that actually works for the retro look if that's what's intended. The clay is pretty much the same as the dirt and snow, I think. I don't know if this is exactly a recolor, but it's very much the same vein as one. And it just kind of ends up feeling uninspired. Though I do honestly like the, uh, the kind of bluish gray that was chosen for this. It's very cool. Uh, the sea lanterns don't really have a texture. I don't think they have an animation, or if it is, it's very, very subtle. And I can't tell. But it's basically just a huge white block with a cyan border. Nothing offensive about it. Looks really good. Let's come over to the House of Many Colors now. Here we have the lime and yellow room. And all of these look very good together. Again, I'm betting that this is on a pretty strict palette. And so it ends up feeling like everything is consistent as far as the color, although the wool is a bit darker than the stained clay. But that's fine. I don't mind that as long as it all looks good together. Uh, obviously it's not consistent with the banners because they use hard-coded colors. Nothing that can be done about that. I do really like the flower pots though, by the way. Having that uh, different color at the top make it, makes it feel more like it's ceramic, like actual like finished ceramic, rather than just hardened clay, or rather than just fired clay, I should say. I like the trapdoors. They feel very decorative without being like excessively so. They just feel good and kind of rustic. Very, very neat. Come over into the brown and black room. Everything looks good in here too. Everything is very consistent and everything works well with the dark oak. So you have this nice kind of little trifecta of colors. I always like it when things that logically should look good together end up doing so. So major props for that. And again, all of the wool is just kind of recolors of one another, which is fine. Uh, especially for wool where it like literally is the same block except dyed. I like the note blocks too, by the way. They have the same kind of uh, gold border as a lot of the menus do. So we have, you know, kind of the blue interior and then the golden borders for everything. And that extends to some of the stuff here. The dining room of red and orange. Everything feels very consistent here too. Um, all of the colors, and even a little bit with the banners. So that actually works very, very well. I like it. The kitchen of white and gray. We have a purple crafting tabletop. Now these are actually randomized. As you can see over here, we have a blue one. And with the GUI, they have the same gold borders, blue. Very easy to see. I'm not a fan of having nothing behind the, the text, but it doesn't look bad. Same thing over here. We have very stylized, a lot of straight edges. It looks very, very clean, very, very cool. Very easy to see where everything is, where everything is going. I like it. I like it quite a lot. Yeah. And uh, as for the white goes, this is one of the rare ones where it doesn't actually work because we have the uh, white stained clay up here, which has a much dingier look. This is one of the few times when the colors, the, you know, just color blocks are inconsistent. And that extends over here into the glass as well, which works with that, but not with the wool. So, that's a bit of a concern. Not bad, just something that I point, like to point out. Here we see the magenta and purple, which are so similar, they are almost interchangeable. I actually kind of had to do a double take walking in here to make sure that something hadn't transmuted everything into all being the same color. But no, there is some color variation here. I like the cyan beds, by the way. Very cool. Uh, and for the most part, it's, again, kind of consistent with the banner textures. So it's not bad. Coming over here to the other bedroom with the pink and cyan. The cyan is not consistent with the banners. It's not even consistent with the bed, but I'm not sure it's supposed to be. Um, I think that this is actually more for the light blue for this pack. So that's fine. That's fine. But the pinks are pretty consistent, and the cyans are pretty consistent across all blocks. Pretty cool. Let's go into the blue and light blue bathroom. I like that the light blue is a very kind of vivid cyan. 
it looks very, very good, especially in this bathroom where I've alternated the colors. It does not look anything like the banner blue, but eh, what are you going to do about that? Hard-coded colors suck. <laughs> there's, there's no question about that. And the blue is very deep, very nice, very relaxing. I like it quite a lot. Come over to the hobby room with the green and gray. The greens are very consistent for the blocks, but thankfully he's opted for a more bluish green as opposed to the ugly yellow green. I appreciate that quite a lot. And of course the grays are always going to look good together. The ender chests, again, have that nice gold border that we see with the GUIs. Very, very cool looking. Very, very cool looking. And a bit of a preview of the quartz, which has some nice depth to it. Not fond of the end rod. I always uh, feel that glowing blocks should be very bright, should feel like they emit light. This feels like just like a gray rod. This feels more like a like a rod that I would hang clothes on than something that I would have around for light. But what are you gonna do? Um, that's uh, you know that's the artist's decision, and I don't agree with it. So I'm going to tell you why I don't agree with it, and that is because it doesn't look like it emits light. And it's light. Over in the garden, we see the nice red brick which does have kind of a diagonal pattern to it, and I'm not a fan of that. Um, but for brick, it's actually not the most offensive thing in the world because you could honestly assume that it was intentional. A lot of the crops just feel like recolors of each other. In fact, I'm pretty sure that they are. We've got beetroots, we've got carrots, and we've got potatoes, and the only difference between them is just the shades of green used. Uh, here we have a mistake in the pack. Uh, I'm pretty sure these two textures were supposed to be swapped because we have the connecting version over here and the uh, unconnected version over here being connected to the melon. I didn't notice this, by the way, uh, earlier, the little 3D stem. I like that. Again, this feels more like the direction that the pack is going to be going. Over here is wheat. It looks very good, very easy to see, and is consistent with most of the other textures in the pack having I mean, just the right level of detail. Here we see that the stem is in fact uh, just swapped on that side. I'm assuming that that'll be fixed in the next version once uh, Irish Pixels watches this video or if somebody tells him. Uh, I'm assuming Irish Pixels is a him by the way. I, I did not ask so apologies if I got that wrong. Um, the pumpkins have a nice 3D which yeah, this is actually just like a shading error in Minecraft. Okay, never mind. I was going to comment on that, but that's actually Minecraft's fault for handling uh, adjacent blocks in a very stupid way. So, lit up. Pretty much the same texture, though, on both of them. You couldn't really tell it from any other side, but that's uh, pretty normal for jack-o'-lanterns. Not a big deal. I'm going to skip right by the museum today because there are, is not very much done in terms of either the paintings or the items. So we're going to just kind of go right on past that and over here to the workshop. Furnaces. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan mainly of this huge color field. And of course the particle effects are not finished in this pack, so that's why that looks very inconsistent using the, uh, the default fire particles but it feels more like there should be something more in this just huge area rather than just a big glowing texture. Um, it's just too it's just too simple. Um, the anvils, the anvils are pretty easy to see the damage on, but again it's pretty much just big color fields. That's actually a lot more excusable than the anvils because they are just giant manufactured metal uh, objects, but I don't know, I feel like something more should be Done. and especially with the borders around the edge. Not a fan of that. The stone bricks, pretty much I think the exact same texture as the prismarine brick that we saw earlier, just colored gray, so just palette swapped. Fire, the fire animation looks very cool, but I'm almost wondering if it's not just recolored default, because it feels like there's a lot of inconsistency where it goes almost like solid, like the lightest yellow for just like a few seconds. Not a real big fan of that. Pressure plates, they just inherit their textures. Nothing bad about that. The dropper and dispenser look very different from each other. Very easy to see which one is which. Although, I think that the uh, sides are exactly the same. But, you know, that's pretty standard. I'm not going to hold that against this pack. The chests... Hmm, yep. The chests are pretty good. They have a pretty high level of detail. It's consistent with the planks. 
The droppers look pretty good. Again, there's a bit more detail what with beveling on certain parts of it. And it looks pretty good. It's very simple, but it also works for this pack. Over here, we see, again, more of the 3D. Uh, the repeater and the, or no, excuse me, the comparator and the repeater. And here's the cool thing about this. See this little knob? It actually sticks out when these blocks are receiving redstone. So in addition to the color change and the particle effects, there is actually a 3D indicator that these blocks are powered. I really like that detail. That is very, very cool. I appreciate that so much. The enchanting table, again, very 3D, but it ends up looking out of place next to the very flat bookshelves and basically everything else. This is the problem with 3D. You kind of have to either go for broke or it's going to end up with a few blocks just completely standing out. And I'm hoping that this pack goes full 3D, but we'll see how that ends up working out. Pistons, I'm not... I don't know. This glob of uh, goo, this glob of slime, feels very weird on this. I'm not sure what the exact shape is supposed to be here. But it does contrast well from the regular piston. And then, of course, the whole of the piston. Very mechanical. Feels very good. I have nothing bad to say about it. Over with the TNT, you can see the TNT block, just basic wooden crate. No custom explosion for this one, that's just vanilla, so nothing much to be said there. All of the oak wood blocks, very cool. Nice big window in the oak door. Most of the doors seem to be just kind of default redux, so it's very easy to tell what they are, and really no special textures on any of the fence gates or you know anything else like that. The hay blocks over here, again, more high contrast than a lot of the blocks and with a lot more detail. For supposedly going for a simple style, there are a lot of blocks like this that don't feel simple, that feel like they have a lot of shading, uh, like for example right there under the bands, there's some shading, and a lot of detail where you can see like individual uh, shafts of, of wheat, of grain. So I don't know, again, just kind of inconsistent in how things work. Now most of the mobs aren't done, but there are enough to where I'm going to take a look at them. Uh, the cows, very cool. Again, going with that simple style, but having just enough shading. I'm not a fan of the shadow under the whole cow, because it really does look like a box uh, sitting on top of uh, like table legs almost. I wish that the leg connected better with the body on these, but I guess artistic style. It just seems odd. Uh, sheep, kind of the same thing. We have the underline. Although, with the sheep you can kind of excuse a little bit more because of the wool. So you can assume that that actually does kind of puff out to the side and give the sheep more depth to it. Uh, chicken? Chicken looks cool. Nothing much to say about the chicken. I don't think... yeah, I don't think this is done, or if it does, it's so very default redux that I can't tell that it's uh, that it's custom. I do like the water, by the way. I forgot to comment on the water. The uh, still water is very static, and I don't like that. And this just kind of... It's just two-tone and is falling. It doesn't really feel consistent because it's so high contrast, but it's not terrible. The pig, same thing. We kind of got the, uh, the box pig, but pig looks good. The bat is looking very dark and spooky. Hey Bat, you ready for Halloween? Yeah, you ready for Halloween. I like it. The horses are not done, the wolves I don't think are done, the cats are done! Kind of the same thing, um, except in this one, the geometry of the cat actually kind of cancels the, uh, the shelf shading there. I don't know why I'm calling it shelf shading, but, you know, kind of the box shading at the bottom. Uh, I wish that that would kind of be simulated with the other mobs to kind of go along more with that, where it feels like the legs are connected to the body along the side and not just a block sitting on top. Uh, all of that isn't done, that's not done, that's not done, that's not done. Okay, over to the village. The villagers are totally done. We've got the farmer villager. He's looking very good. Looking very cool. Coming over here, we've got 
the blacksmith. I love the blacksmith. I love the gloves. I love that he's got a welding mask that has a big old like slot for his nose. That is so cool. I love this guy. Like this pack gets extra points just for this blacksmith. I love him. The uh, butcher got a little bit of blood on him. Got some gloves on. Very cool looking dude. And Golem is not done. We've got the snowman, which is finished. Let's see what you got under the pumpkin there, snowman. Ah, just a little carrot nose. Very simple. Very simple. Uh, very well in line with the snow textures, as you can see. Although this does go quite a bit darker. But that's fine. That gives it some nice depth. Very, very cool. Throw away the shears, because I won't be needing them. Librarian. He's got uh, suspenders. Now this like doesn't say librarian to me so much as it says like lumberjack. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's the beard, maybe it's the suspenders. I don't know. This dude does not seem like a librarian to me. I don't know, maybe I've just been hanging around in the wrong kind of libraries. The cleric, very cool looking. But the one thing that bothers me about this guy is he's wearing brown pants. I don't know why, maybe it's just where I'm from, but I don't see a lot of clergy wearing brown pants while they're wearing their uh, their cleric getup or their you know preacher or pastor or shepherd kind of getup. Uh, the black pants or the brown pants just seem weird. I'm not sure why. Let's go over to the roundhouse and then we'll head underground. The tracks very very basic, but looking good. The mine carts unfortunately are not finished. We have the powered rails. Which are kind of easy, to, or yeah, they're easy to see when they're turned on, but it's kind of hard to tell that there are powered rails if there's something over them, like a cart. I always like it when some of the details on the outside, but that's just my own conceit. It's nothing against the pack. The pressure plate, a little bit harder to see when it's active, but usually when it's active, the cart is going to be over it anyway, so that's not actually an issue. And then the. Um, what do you call it? Activator rails. Yes, I'm forgetting the names of blocks now. The activator rails, again, pretty much the same as the uh, powered rails. So, easy to see when it's on, but uh, not a lot of detail in there. Alright, let's head underground. Here we are in the underground. For starters, we have diorite. This is very much more in the simple and implied detail school of texture that about half this pack has, very similar to the stone in that regard. Not a lot going on with it, mostly just a flat color field with a few square uh, details in it. Not bad. The processed version of diorite, however, is the exact opposite. It's in the explicit form, more high detail sort of a thing. Uh, this texture being, I think, the exact same texture as the prismarine brick, just again recolored. The granite, on the other hand, actually does have some unique text or some details that are unique to it, although not completely unique to it. As we see, they also are in the bedrock, the little L shape with the dot that uh, makes it feel kind of more porous than the rest of the stone textures. It's not bad. The um, processed version of granite, however, is the exact opposite. It basically uses a recolor of the hardened clay textures. So it's this kind of big boxy looking sort of texture with just a very plain color field in it. I'm not actually a big fan of that. Uh, same over here with the andesite, I believe? Yes. Andesite used basically a recolor of the same texture. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is a recolor of the granite and bedrock texture. Whereas the uh, block is, or the uh, chisel block, what is actually this called? Polished, polished andesite. Yeah, the polished version, I think processed wasn't the right word. The polished version is, again, just the hardened clay texture recolor or something very near to it. For gold, we have these very nice shiny gold blocks and just these little gold specks, gold nuggets in the stone, which actually is randomized, by the way, and I like that. I love randomized ores. Um, the problem, however, is that you get the iron ore and the gold ore. 
Yeah, they look very, very similar, as you can probably tell just from me looking here. It's almost hard to see which one is which. That's kind of a detriment to the pack. I wonder how many users of this pack have passed by a bunch of gold just thinking, oh, it, just more iron, I don't need it. Now, the iron block is interesting because it's the only one that has these dots in it. It's inconsistent with the rest, even though it's still in the large color field school of block making. I'm not sure why that is, actually, but uh, whatever. This one is coal. Now, the coal block actually has a lot more detail than the golden iron box, and I'm not sure exactly why. It feels like this is a place where this pack would just go for a recolor, but in this case did not. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Coal, on the other hand, does look very different. It has the big kind of uh, lumps of coal in the ore or in the stone, which, again, is randomized. You can see two big lumps here to be on this one. I think that there's probably a four version uh, somewhere, I'm not sure. But very, very cool. The lapis uses the same uh, texture as the coal, I think, or rather a recolor of it, again, um, but uses the same higher detail version uh, that is for the coal block, obviously only with more shades to it. So not exactly a strict palette swap, but close enough, I think. Diamond actually uses, I believe, the same one. No, it doesn't use the same one as the gold. Never mind. Diamond actually has its own block texture. Looks very cool, and definitely its own ore texture. One thing that I wish is that there were more random variants of this. Having the one gigantic diamond piece always in that one corner uh, is very distracting. I wish that there was some more randomness to this, or at least like random rotations or whatever. And then you also have variants that just don't have a giant diamond texture in them at all. So basically just because of the size in this one, it ends up standing out a whole lot more than it probably should. And redstone. Uh, is redstone? Yeah, redstone is using a recolor of the diamond block. I had to double check that, as is the emerald over there. And uses pretty much the same uh, ore texture as the lapis and coal over there. And emerald is pretty much just a green version of the diamond all around. So a lot of recolors, which I'm not exactly really happy about because it doesn't make the uh, these blocks feel really special. For the stone brick, the variations are very, very good. Again, more explicit forms, more actual like carving in rather than just implying texture through dots. Um, and I do love this. It has good depth to the carving in part. I really like it. Kind of contrast to the spider webs, which are just sort of meh. They feel very squared off. They don't feel rounded. They don't feel particularly organic. Um, not a fan of those. The spawner is really just a cage, nothing particularly special about it. And here we have all of the mobs. Now, I will say I've been having problems with this map uh, keeping the mobs spawned in, so I might have to pause real quick to reset this area. But uh, zombie villagers, basically just the villagers but green, although we do see some of the uh, some tattering along their clothes. And so forth. This dude lost his beard. This dude lost his beard in the uh, transition to zombiness. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Um, again, this dude, just ragged down there. Green skin, welder, same thing. The butcher is actually the best. He has way more blood on him and blood on his hands. This dude went full zombie. I like this one. This one's my favorite of the zombies. Then we have the regular old zombie. Just kind of green skin dude. The husk is not done. Obviously the horses are not done. The skeleton, pretty good. Uh, good enough detail, or high enough level of detail to where it feels like it belongs with the majority of this pack. Not too much, not too little, just right. And then we have the stray. Pretty much just a uh, recolor of the regular skeleton, but with a, a helmet. Like a big black helmet. Not sure why, but still cool. Oh, and glowing blue eyes do love the glowing blue eyes. And there is supposed to be a silverfish here. I don't know why this guy isn't staying around, but I'm gonna have to 
figure that out. I'll be right back. I need to spawn him back in. There we are. That's better. Took a moment to spawn this guy back in and grab myself a drink of water. Feel much better now. Feel much better now. Much happier. As for this end, or what do I want to call it? An endermite silverfish. Uh, kind of pillow shaded. Not all that great. Fairly simple. And then we have a red creeper. Here's the thing. These are actually random. These creepers come in every color of the rainbow. They appear to be completely random. I don't think it's a biome specific thing. Uh, from what I can tell, it's just completely random colors, which is great. Um, actually, wait, I'm using Optifine, and I don't think Optifine does biome specific mobs yet. Never mind. Uh, so, yeah, uh, random colored creepers. This one's red. They look very creepery. Uh, they have about the right level of detail for the pack. I wish that there was a bit more shading uh, on the top of the shoulders to kind of give a drop shadow for the head. But altogether, very, very cool. The spiders are not done, the slime is not done, and the witch. The witch looks just like, you know, kind of a jaunty dude. Uh, honestly, this looks more like an explorer. Like, this like this could be like the next, uh, the next uh, Doctor Who or something. Uh, he just looks like a cool guy, other than like the big, huge, like 3D wart that I'm still not sure why Mojang added. But other than that, yeah, just like kind of a cool dude. Doesn't look like a witch. Doesn't really look threatening. Just like a nice guy. Like you know, you see this dude walking, you're just like, hey, dude, what's up? And he's like, hey, what's good, man? So yeah, I don't know. I like the witch. I don't believe either of these are done. No, they are not. So let us head to the Nether. We don't have a uh, Nether portal finished, and the Obsidian pretty much exactly the same as the uh, bedrock. Here we are, here we are. Oh, the quartz is beautiful in this pack. I love the quartz. It's just that right, perfect shade of kind of bluish white, just just ever so slightly tinted. The, uh, the bone block looks pretty cool too. It has a really strong pattern to it, but it actually doesn't bother me, uh, simply because it feels so intentional. The lava, on the other hand, is well, kind of lazy. It's just two colors, and it looks very pixely and very high contrast. It doesn't look good with most of the rest of the blocks in this pack. I'm hoping this is a work in progress, because it's, it's, it's not good at all. We have the red nether brick. Again, I believe that this is just a uh, recolor of the same texture used for the, uh, the polished diorite and the uh, prismarine bricks. Same way with the regular nether brick. It's just black, which is nice. I like, actually like uh, nether brick as a uh, black texture. That looks very cool, kind of sinister. And nether rack is just, it's kind of red, very, again, very low detail, mostly just a color field, but there is actually some variation in the little details. There's at least like three shades in the little details. So it actually stands out, looks pretty good. I really do like it. The quartz ore, very easy to see, very white, looks very good. Again, low detail, but it actually does feel like there's some uh, some shading on the indent, which I always love. I always love it when ores are kind of indented. As I mentioned, the lava, kind of lazy. I think it's actually uh, using the pretty much the same texture for the magma. Is it? Yeah? I'm pretty sure that these are the same textures, or very, very closely related. Uh, this one just has a little bit more depth to it, with very, very hard shading right next to the very high contrast glowing parts that actually are animal, which is nice. Which is nice. Uh, not my favorite thing, but pretty good. Then we have the uh, nether wart block. Yeah, so that's what this is, the nether wart block which uses the same colors as the nether work. Again, we have like no shading on the plants here. Not a fan of that. And the soul sand is literally just a black version of the same uh, diagonal stripe pattern as the regular sand and the red sand. So kind of meh there. The uh, nether mobs are barred to us today because they're barely done, so we'll be heading into the end early. Here we are, here we are in the end. And we have, I think, a very similar texture to the magma block and the lava for the end stone. Uh, looks pretty cool. The end brick, again, same texture, just a recolor. Not much to be said about that. I do like the purpur. 
It has a lot of cool patterns on it so that you can actually create some interesting uh, sort of configurations with the patterns by placing them down. It looks pretty nice. The chorus fruit. The chorus fruit honestly looks kind of mechanical. This looks more like bundled cable. Like I'd expect to have this kind of thing uh, attached to like an uh, an ME system in in a mod. Uh, you know that sort of a thing. This is like bundled cable. It looks very cool, very tech. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but that's kind of how it comes off to me. The end portals, pretty basic but you don't often see them, so that's fine. They just need to stand out enough to serve a purpose. Uh, same with the Eyes of Ender. The Eyes of Ender, honestly, I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. They don't honestly look like eyes. They look more like a uh, carved stone that's fit in rather than like a gemstone or something. It's kind of unique. I actually do like it, by the way. And of course, the end portal itself I don't think is done, or if it is, it's very, very similar to default. The end crystals are done. That's a nice change. Very few packs seem to have the end crystals done. I appreciate that Irish Pixels took the time to finish the end crystals. They look very, very good. Very uh, glassy on the outside. I almost wonder if this isn't resed up from the default uh, 16 by 16 because it seems like there's like the detail in the glass ones is finer than you'd normally see in a 16 by 16 texture. So I'm wondering if this isn't resed up a bit. Um, either way, it looks very, very cool. I like it. Up here we have, this is the Endermite. This is the Endermite. Again, pretty much the same. Just kind of pillow shaded a little bit. Uh, not much to talk about. The Enderman. Oh, I love the Enderman. The Enderman actually has like a gradient down to its arms where it's brighter. I often, um, I don't know. I wonder if this is, I wonder if the limbs actually glow in the dark like the eyes do. That would be cool. That would be cool. I did not check that, but that would be amazing. As for the level of detail, it pretty much matches its surroundings uh, pretty well. So I like it. The Shulker. The Shulker is also done, which I like. Uh, the Shulker block looks very cool. Just pretty much a basic box shape. Um, the shulker itself doesn't, or the uh, like little interior pearl part, doesn't have a lot of detail. Whoops. But um, it does have cute little eyes and just enough to be, just enough detail on the whole thing to fit in with most of the rest of it. So, that was Ventura by Irish Pixels. What do I think of this pack? On the positive side, Ventura is definitely one of the resource packs that does simple right. There are no places in this pack where I felt that something was lazy or just completely flat or just gridded off. Even in the textures that have the least detail, the most implied texture, there's still a lot of detail. There's still a feeling that this is an object in the world that actually has its own grit, its own feel to it. There's nothing that feels like it's just plastic. The other side of that, however, is that the entire feel of the pack, taken as a whole, is not always very consistent. There are some textures that feel excessively simple, or excessively flat, or that imply detail rather than actually showing detail. There are some blocks that have really great form, well, there are some blocks that really only imply form. There are also a lot of things that are reused from texture to texture. There's a lot of recolors and palette swaps, which ends up coming off as being very consistent in form, but also a bit boring when you have looked at the pack for a little while. At least some of this, I think, is going to be rectified in the future as the pack continues to develop things like how some assets have really great 3D models, whereas most are very flat. That's the sort of thing that can't just be done overnight, and so will be brought closer to being completely consistent as the pack continues to develop. This is not to say that the pack is completely inconsistent, however. The color scheme is expertly chosen. The colors in this pack are great, and because it's on a fixed palette, I would assume, the colors are very consistent from block to block. It gives the entire thing 
a very, very beautiful, very even sort of a feel when taken in large screenshots from a distance or so forth. All of the colors work well together. Nothing fights, nothing clashes, and when taken as an overall aesthetic, the color scheme ends up feeling very relaxing and very beautiful. So here at the end, I am awarding Ventura Iron out of 5. An average score. This is a good pack overall. It needs some work in the areas of consistency, but overall is definitely worth your time to check out. So tell me, what did you think of this resource pack? Leave me a comment in the comment section below, because that is what it is for. And if you'd like to see more of these resource pack critiques, then please leave a like on this video. It would help me out. And if you disagree with me wholeheartedly on my assessment of this pack, please leave a dislike. Don't worry, I'm not going to be offended. Both likes and dislikes help me to improve the quality of my videos. And so, until the next critique, I am Alvoria, encouraging you to make good art. I'll see ya. Wee.